Adam Smith presented his ideas on the free market in his second great book, The Wealth of Nations, which was published in 1776, just months before the American colonies exploded in revolution. Copies made their way across the Atlantic and into the hands of those shaping the structure of the new republic. The founders were dealing with things like how to structure a government, an economy, the banking system, the church, the military, and Smith had a lot of things to say on all these points. So, does the United States follow Smith's principles? The answer can be found here, at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. The Library of Congress is the largest library in the world. Its holdings include more than 32 million catalogued books and other print materials, and the largest rare book collection in North America. Included in the collections is the personal library of founder Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of Independence and a lifelong admirer of Adam Smith. His library at the time uh, numbered 6,487 volumes. Mark Demunation is chief of the rare book and special collections division at the Library of Congress. Certainly one thing you can learn by looking at Jefferson's library is the pervasiveness of Enlightenment philosophy and intellectual conversation that plays throughout the creation of the American government. In fact, you could claim that Jefferson's book collection brings the Enlightenment to America. In 1814, the British attacked and burned Washington. On learning of the burning of the Capitol and the loss of the 3,000 volume Library of Congress, Jefferson offers Congress his personal library as a replacement. And in 1815, uh, Gentlemen arrived with horse-drawn wagons, took a collection that took Jefferson 50 years to build, left him in Monticello. He never saw his books again, never went to Washington again. But a second fire on Christmas Eve in 1851 destroyed two-thirds of those volumes. Through a private grant, the Library of Congress is now reassembling Jefferson's library, as it was when he sold it to Congress 200 years ago. It was the entire world of Thomas Jefferson's mind, the understanding of the roots of so much of what influences American culture, the nature of the Constitution, the nature of the Revolution, the foundation of separation of church and state, the whole uh, philosophy of, of uh, politics um, as it is in the United States is embedded in that collection. One book that has survived is Thomas Jefferson's original copy of The Wealth of Nations. This is the three-volume set of inquiry into the uh, nature and causes of the Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith. These are books that belong to Thomas Jefferson. He writes a lot about his reading, but he very rarely marks his books. There's no underlining here. There's no good idea used in the Declaration of Independence. There's nothing like that. Uh, so you really have to read what Jefferson says about books in order to understand what he gains from them. Jefferson didn't just read Smith's book. He frequently studied it, referenced it, and recommended it to others. In a letter to John Norval, Jefferson writes, if your views of political inquiry go further to the subjects of money and commerce, Smith's Wealth of Nations is the best book to be read. There has to have been a moment in which Jefferson and Hamilton had a conversation that was at least laced with Smithian philosophy, if nothing else, whether they identified him or not. This is a book, however, that, that Jefferson would take seriously. But Jefferson wasn't the only Smith devotee among the founders. James Madison, considered the principal author of the Constitution, was also an admirer. I think of Madison as having a view of government very similar to Smith's in a very, very deep way. Sam Fleischacker has written extensively about Adam Smith's influences in colonial America. Both Madison and Smith believe that human beings are strongly motivated by self-interest, but also capable of virtue, and that what you want to do is design institutions such that, first of all, freedom is protected whether people are acting in a self-interested fashion or not, and secondly, they have the opportunity to develop their virtues. So the founders certainly knew of Smith and his works. But to what extent did Smith influence the American character? Is the United States Smithian? I think the United States is Smithian in its bones. Smith fits extremely well with the vision of the founders 
and indeed of the vision of most Americans from that time to, to our own. And what you see in the Constitution is an attempt to implement and integrate into a governmental plan some of the ideas Smith had about what could allow for a prosperous society. Every man is left perfectly free to pursue his own interest in his own way. The sovereign is completely discharged from a duty for which no human wisdom or knowledge could ever be sufficient. The duty of superintending the industry of private people. The United States sees itself and talks about itself as a land of opportunity. That's really the Smithian vision in a nutshell. You have a limited government with a few but specific and robust protections. Much of the actual work of making your life better was left to the individuals. But to do that in a way that was stable, to do it in a way that had long-term benefits, to do it in a way in which uh, there weren't simply the concerns of the moment, but to have a lasting constitutional order. This, I think, binds uh, the American founders to the Scots, and especially to Smith, in a deep way. Well, here you have a groundbreaking book in how to run an economy. And more than that, it's really a general book on politics. So it makes a good deal of sense that these people who are founding a new country would look over to the best work in the Enlightenment, not just to Smith, but to the other great social scientists of the day, as it were, and uh, be particularly interested in them. Ideas matter. When faced with the challenge of how to create and structure a new nation, the founders turned to the Enlightenment and to Adam Smith for guidance.